Torah. Torah says, don't be selfish. But don't be selfish, not with your friend or even with your enemy, someone you don't like. Why don't you like him? Oh, he's a sinner. Oh, this guy's a, uh, this guy's a sinner. This guy, you know, he steals in his business, violates Shabbat. So, ah, I shouldn't help him. No, 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 my friend. If he's a Jew, you have to help him unless he's an idol worshiper. If he's an idol worshiper or he's someone that leads other people astray, then it says, let his donkey die. Let him die too. If he's stuck in a hole, if the idol worshiper is stuck in a hole, let him die. Don't save him. But how do we actually act in the world? We act in the world, but we save them too. Why? If you are a doctor and you get a call on Shabbat that someone is at risk of dying unless you come to the hospital and you save their life with some type of surgery. If it's a Jew, it's a mitzvah for you to go save this guy's life. It's a mitzvah for you to drive in a car on Shabbat to go save somebody's life. Mitzvah. It's not like it's not a sin. It's an actual mitzvah to drive on Shabbat and perform anything to save a Jewish life. But what about if it's not a Jew? If you're a doctor, you still have to drive on Shabbat to go save the non-Jew. And the reason why is not because it's a mitzvah to save the non-Jew. But rather, it's because if you don't save the non-Jew, then what's going to end up happening is that the non-Jewish doctors are not going to save the Jews. You're going to indirectly hurt other Jews. Therefore, you go save the non-Jew also. You're not allowed to hate the sinner. You have to hate the sin. The Gemara Masechet Brachot has a debate between... Uh, Rabbi Meir Baraness and his wife Buya. Buya was a Talmidah Chachama, a very wise woman, I knew a lot of Torah. She saw that uh, her husband, the Gdol Ador, Rabbi Meir Baraness, was being insulted and bothered by these Avaryanim, these uh, gangsters outside. Every day, the little gangster kids would bother him, call him names, all types of things. So they bothered him so much every day, every day, every day that uh, one day he found himself starting to pray for them to die. Before he finished the prayer, because had he finished the prayer, definitely they would die. Bulia, who heard this, stopped him in the middle of the prayer. She says, my dear husband, don't you know that Hashem doesn't want them to die? If he wanted them to die, they would already be dead. Don't you know that you're supposed to hate the sin and not the sinner? Rather than praying for them to die, pray for them to do tshuva. And Rabbi Meir says, Tatkami Meni, you're right, you're right, I should pray for them to do tshuva. He prayed for them to do tshuva, and they ended up doing tshuva. So that means, Abu Tai, that if you see a Mechalel Shabbat, driving on Shabbat, you see someone that's married to a non-Jew, you see a Jew married to a non-Jew, you see a Jewish guy going to casino gambling, you see a Jewish guy eating pork, don't hate him. The sin, of course you should hate the sin. But him itself, him, his personality, don't hate him per se. Why? He's not, normally, he's not making the sin because he hates God. Generally speaking, most Jews are dear people and they're simply sinning because they're ignorant. They're clueless of the law. And even if they know the law, they don't know the consequence of violating the law. So they're eating pork because their belly is of higher value to them than the Torah is. If they're intermarried, that's because their private part is their brain, instead of their brain being their brain. Uh, if they're stealing in business, that's because they've turned money into God, which many religious people do also. So don't hate the sinner, hate the sin. Unless, unless the sinner is a machtia rabim. If the sinner leads other people astray, if the sinner makes fun of the Torah, if the sinner leads people to Christianity or to idolatry or to atheism or to Muslims or uh, Islam or he leads them away from God altogether for no reason or he leads them to nightclubs or he leads them to make all types of crimes against Hashem. That's, he does it like he knows. This is a sinner, he doesn't care. He leads them astray on purpose. He makes fun of the Torah. He writes things against the rabbis that are tzaddikim. He uh, makes fun of God, things like that. Then he's a machtiyah rabim. Then he's a mesit. Somebody that leads people astray. And a person like that, it is a mitzvah. Again, it's a mitzvah to pray for that person to die. You pray for him to die without even knowing three times a day in Amidah. This is in your Amidah three times a day. You pray for such people to die. Why? Because they lead people away from God. Why? Because these people are enemies. So, those people, mitzvah to hate them, mitzvah to wish for them to die. But as far as regular, average, 
uh, Jewish guy that uh, is clueless, just doesn't doesn't follow the Torah. No, that guy you pray for him to do tshuva, and Bezalel uh, he will. Hopefully, he will. Uh, you know, it's a uh, sometimes they don't. Nonetheless, it's, it's somebody that you need to help. A person like that that violates Shabbat or other things, but not on purpose, not to make God mad and so on. You see his donkey in the hole. Go help him. Go help him. Why do you go help him? Because that could potentially be your opening to not only show that you don't hate him, you hate his sins, but not him. Uh, but also, further than that, that could also be a way for you to connect to this person and show them the beauty of Judaism. When they actually understand that we have rules for everything, but that's to mankind's benefit, they realize how beautiful Judaism is.